And we would like to welcome those of you who just finished watching the conclusion of the Titans Dolphins <laughs> seven hour affair. This is NFL Total Access presented by Bridgestone. Lindsey Rhodes, Scott Hansen at your service. So first Sunday of the NFL season, Linz, we a saw one. a seven hour football game. We saw the first tie in week one in almost 50 years, and we saw the highest scoring season opener in the Super Bowl era. And the Browns didn't lose. Lake Erie worked. We're kidding, obviously, but it is a big step forward, and we've got a Hall of Famer here who thinks that Browns that smells fans 600 days should old be confetti. Pretty right excited. There. That's gonna be fun to clean yeah. up. We'll get to that in just 472 yards with Connor contributing 192 of those. Ladanian Tomlinson, do you think that they will be okay until Bell comes back? I think Tom would tell if Bell comes back. I mean, I think that's the word we should be talking about. If he, that'll be tough. How about the Browns? We need to talk about them because we thought that they would yeah. be better than they were last year. Certainly looked like it out of the gate. What did you think of their performance? Well, I, I was impressed with their performance because this I'm seeing from that defense. The offense had come around, but that defense is special. Yeah, a lot of people uh, wondered what John Dorsey was doing when he took Ward. Um, it turns Pretty out uh, he might have known what he was talking about. Six takeaways for that Browns defense. That's the most they've had since 2012 against the Steelers. Uh, it looks like they haven't found the answers to the questions that we asked all offseason about Witten and Dez and what in the heck they're going to do to replace those guys. Uh, what are your answers for them moving forward? Did you see anything that they could work on for week two? Well, I think Scott Lenahan has to put them in a better position. Ten carries through the, the first three quarters is something crazy. He had 15 carries total for 69 yards, which is the second fewest yards in a game in which he's had at least 10 attempts. Yeah. It just, you, you, you got to be on But that. he's seeing a lot of eight-man boxes, a lot more than he's seen in the last two years. Do they have the weapons offensively to keep defenses you know, honest so that's not the case? Honestly, it's really not about the weapons you have. And he's telling us to move. Mike we got to go. So. <laughs> I, they deserve. And those are the stories you'll find here in Roads Less Traveled, like Ryan Tannehill. Know who returned to the field yesterday after a longer time away than Andrew Luck? This guy, 637 days between starts and nary a peep about either his injury or the way that his return could affect his team, which for the record appeared to be immensely. Yesterday's win, they're eight in his last nine starts. And how about those rookies? Not Saquon or Roquan or even Derwin. You all know about them. How about Philip Lindsay, who had the entire tight end community in standard scoring fantasy points? Dude was a defensive end three years ago. Now he's winning fantasy leagues for the 0.1% of fantasy teams that actually drafted him. Don't want this to slip through the cracks either. 14 roughing the passer penalties yesterday. That is twice as much as week one last year. And part of the reason for that is the new body weight rule. Defenders discouraged from landing on the passer when they tackle them. Miles Garrett, Carlos Dunlap, both did. They were both penalized. Uh, Tom yes. Pelissero spoke to Al Riveron today, Willie McGinnis, and Riveron said that the officials erred in the case of Garrett's call mm -hmm. because only some of his weight landed on the quarterback <laughs> instead of most or all as the rule is written. What are these guys supposed to do? Well, it's tough, and it's hard to gauge how much weight you're either putting on the quarterback